disorderly lily or poem letter to my orderly lily whom I sometimes refer to as my disorderly lily because of the condition we find ourselves in. Dear Lily, this is what you might call a pebble beach. I don't know why I thought that would sound funny. It's just what it is. That's what it was. It was West Dorset, after all. I tried to think of a pun involving pebbles and the concept of rock bottom, but nothing came to mind, so instead I said nothing and just let the words hang there, in the air, making everyone feel awkward and weird about me, until one of you intervened and said, let's all go for lunch at the Anchor Inn, and I knew that included me, too, albeit reluctantly. I had talked a lot about pigeons recently, in what I guess was an attempt to make me seem more interesting. I don't have any of those friends who call me darling, in that way people here in Bristol say darling or love to each other. So I thought that frequently invoking the feetless pigeons of Temple Mead Station might somehow, by association, make me seem worthy of care or attention or even love. But of course it doesn't. It just leads me down a path where I'm explaining to blank and pitiful eyes that pigeon shit is as harmful to masonry as it is to the pigeon's own feet, and that standing in their own excrement is what makes them look that way, like they've been to the wars. There's just no knowing why they do that. And then that my dad has Alzheimer's, as if that would somehow save me. Fucking potato head. Potato head fucker. Fuck. I'm sorry I didn't mean to lash out like that. This is what you start to sound like after a while, when you're that guy. The one who starts sentences by saying he doesn't mean to be that guy, and then is. You get used to talking to yourself, so anything kind of goes. Kind of. Sometimes I wish there was a mute button, or a way to just rewind and delete everything I did. Like that overgrown cemetery in Clifton, where you can hardly glean the writing on the stones, where the graves compete with abandoned shopping trolleys for the attention of workers on their lunch break. You know that feeling? I think someone once said that people who commit suicide don't really want to cop it. They just want to go back in time to a place before where they felt differently. Like those last days of winter in Victoria Park when we sat on that bench and ate Jaffa cakes and mocked the Capoeira kids before the Capoeira kids were locked up inside like everyone else and North Street closed and Southfield went cold just like you did after I pointed out that you always wore low cuts for our appointments and could that just be coincidence? Well anyway, maybe it's true, I don't know about suicides, I mean. Right now, I just really don't want to be in West Bay, around you or any of those people and all those asthma-inducing cliff edges. I'm sorry, this really makes things awkward, doesn't it? I shouldn't have brought up any of that. I made a word map of words I would use if I didn't know what to write to you. Sort of like a list of icebreakers, I guess, that someone might take with them to a date. But this isn't a date, obviously. I hope you didn't think I thought this is a date. I mean that I was asking you out. I know you don't. I know, I know, I know that's inappropriate. Here are some of the words I wrote. Chase. Faceless. Endless. Urges. Wondrous. Silt. I don't know why I wrote that last one. I think it's because I cross the Avon every day and see bicycles buried in the silt along Coronation Road. I also wrote the word macroeconomics. I wasn't going to say that one because I don't really know what macroeconomics is, but it would be kind of dishonest, I guess. 
I mean, now that I started talking about it, it would be dishonest not to mention it. I wish you wanted to see me even when you didn't have to. Sincerely, C. Butchkin. <laughs>